Well, on today's video, we're going to swap out the solar panel. Uh, we're going to go from 100 watt, and this is the type, it's just the plastic that rode up on the roof. It came with the GeoPro. The new GeoPros come with an actual metal one that's, I think, 180 watts, but this one had the original was the, the 100 watt. Now, this thing has been deteriorating over the years and I, you can see it's got a little bit of shine on it i sprayed some some clear spray over that just to give it a little bit more life but it just didn't really help out too much right now i've got my new solar controller and if you haven't seen the uh video for that look at that here i'll post it here in the in the on the screen but uh i put in the new solar controller and the most i'm getting out of this panel of course like i say we're we're in the winter time here so the sun it's just a past noon so we're not too high in the air and plus we're on the opposite side from where the sun is but the most we were getting today was i think 32 watts and so this is a 100 watt panel i'm not sure what the max we could be able to get out but like I say that and then i think it was 1.75 amps is what we were pulling and that's the best we could get um just not enough so we're going to upgrade to that 200 watt Renogy system. Now what I want to show you is when you decide you want to do this, you need to get up here and decide your measurements. And uh, you've got a little more room between the air conditioner and that vent there. You can put it there. I want to try to utilize the same connectors here. So I'm trying to keep it in this close area. So the original Renogy I worked, looked at was on sale and it was too long it wouldn't fit between these two spots so i ended up getting one that it, it barely fits i measured on my particular one it's right at 48 and a half almost 49 inches from where that uh, ranger is that wi-fi ranger back to where this connection is so what it's going to do is it's going to put it over top of this connector right here so what i did originally i ordered the the, the actual mounts and I'll show you a picture of what I ordered here. And then, like I say, I also, I decided I wasn't going to use those. I decided to get these ones called the curved ones. They're made by Renergy, and that allows you to get up higher up. And so that's going to work out better for uh, uh, getting it up around the edge of this here, right here. So, well, I got my panel in, and I redid my measurements, and I realized my measurements aren't going to work in this exact location where this is at the old one and so the problem i had is i don't have only so much room between this antenna and up here to the wi-fi ranger i need 50 inches i can maybe get that but then it's 31 inches this way the new panel and i have 30 from there to the gutter so i don't want to cram that in here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put it in between the ac and the max air fan in the back there's about 35 inches there so i'm going to have enough room and i'm going to bring it down as far as i can right up against this area right here in my antenna and my amfn antenna right here so i'm going to have it right down this lower section here and that way my hopefully my wires will reach around from the solar panel and plug into the old uh, mc4 connectors here so if you have the ability to turn off that solar panel i say go go make sure you turn it off and what i did is you if you've seen my other past video where i actually added the new system it's underneath this uh, dinette seat and i have a breaker so i went and turned that turned that breaker off in the down position so that way there'll still be power going into that there, but it's not, it won't be drawn from the battery. So hopefully that'll prevent any kind of sparks when I disconnect this old panel. So I use this tool here. It's called a Klein multi-tool and it has this square shank uh, set up here. And uh, that's what it looks like this is, is a square shank. Puts it in here like this, and then I'm going to back these out. So, I'm going to take out all six of these bolts and gradually work this loose because I don't want to, if it's anything sticking, I don't want this membrane to get tore. So, I'm going to be very careful to get that up. So, I'm going to remove all six of these screws now.
Well, as usual, nothing can be easy. So I have taken out all six of those screws, which is actually the easy part. But as I'm prying up on this, I'm, I don't know how they've attached this. Maybe they use some, some more sealing underneath, but it is trying really hard to pull up this membrane. So here's where I'm at. As, you, as I've shown you, it's a pain to get these old panels off. I've even done some YouTube searches to see where other people was pulling these up. And in most cases, they were doing it from a camper that did not have a membrane. As far as the roofing system, it was off of a fiberglass. And even them, then they had some cracking issues underneath and things like that. I've come to the conclusion that as much as I don't want to do it, I'm going to leave the old panel as is. I'm going to, because I've only done the edges a little bit. To, so I'm going to go ahead and put new sealing on these six screws, put it back in. And at some point, I'm going to terminate these wires. That way it's not having any kind of current inside. I'm, I'm, the only problem is my new solar panel, which I was going to have down lower here, is going to have to go up right dead center of the camper. Which is okay, except for my wires may not reach all the way down to this connector. So I may have to have some kind of extension. But we'll have to see how it goes. But I'm just too worried. I'm prying this thing up and I'm see seeing that there's... Um, that I may end up tearing that membrane on the actual roof and I do not want to do that. So at this point, I'm going to leave this old panel here and it's just not going to be connected. So before you spend all that time putting this thing up, you want to be able to test it. So I've got it out here just laying flat and I'm producing, I had my range set on, make sure it's on DC because originally I didn't have it set on, but I got it on DC. It's producing 37 watts. So what I've done here is I've got this set up where I flipped it over and I've got foam underneath of it so it doesn't do any damage to it. I'm gonna have to mount these brackets and I did buy the more the more pricey and the more ones that these extend it a little bit further. Normally you can put the flat mounts but I'm gonna have these so it sits up higher and also if I need to disconnect it I can disconnect and this part would stay with the roof. Each one of these brackets will have uh, basically you put it in from the from inside up because you go this way you could possibly hit the actual panel so you want to go from the inside up and you want to put once you get it up in here you want to put washer a lock nut and then your nut on top of that so just let you know that these nuts and bolts are all 10 millimeter Now the instructions talk about using a torque wrench. If you like me and you're a mechanical guy, you kind of know where the where you can actually take this to. You want it good and snug, but not too much because then you'll rip out the aluminum. Now on the side ones, you go on like this here, and basically you use a, a bolt on the outside going in. And you use a washer on the inside and actually a nut on the inside. And these are made for a curved surface, but we're going to put them down right where it starts to curve. That way they're extended as far as they can without making that curve. Also, one thing you want to know is that on Renogy, if you if you get a certain kind of panel, I could say that's why I stayed with Renogy. They, they will match up to the Renogy panel. Some of these are wider and you'll have trouble with these Renogy things that won't slide up and down because it'll hit the actual panel. So if you're going to use these Renogy special curve brackets, make sure you have a Renogy panel. You might have trouble with a different type panel. Well, because of the way we couldn't remove our old panel, we're having to put it up here and we're going to put it almost center. It's a little bit to the to the right side of the camper there so this is actually gonna work out good because the air conditioner will block the wind somewhat so what i'm doing now is marking these pads and mark each one of my pads i'm going to drill two holes little pilot holes for my boat so they won't strip out or anything and then i'll push this off add some sealing on make sure the soles are drilled and then pull it back into the sealant put the boats down and then seal it over the the boats so what i've done is i've marked each one of those and i've drilled a small pilot hole i'm not crazy about these boats that are in here because they actually have a, a self-tapping setup on the end 
and I'm kind of wondering how well they're going to attach because I have I don't not sure I'm getting to the structural member this air particular camper I don't not sure if there's even a structural member in there I've tried to find them and couldn't find them so it's going to be attached to the plywood on the outside so if this doesn't work properly I'm going to end up getting a bigger screw and thread it in with a more coarse thread and it'll catch it a little bit better so okay so I used uh, two on each one of those and I don't like the way those are grabbing, so I'm going to end up getting a different coarser screw and use those two center ones. I'm going to use a coarser screw, and I'm not even going to put a pilot hole in those. I'm just going to put them down in there, and uh, that should be able to torque them down nice and tight. So I changed a few things. I'll show you here in a minute. I got some different bolts, and I'll show you that here in a little bit that I'm going to redo on these. But I also had to order uh, three-foot lengths of the... Uh, mc4 plugs to give me an extension from here over to the actual panel so it's a little frosty up here this morning the sun's just now popping up so i want to try to get this plugged in and see what kind of see what kind of voltage and wattage we're getting uh in the early morning and as the, as the sun comes up how well it comes out so i want to try to get this hooked up so here's where I changed up the plan, and like I say, I would recommend this because I, I watched a couple of YouTube videos, and this is what they did. They say these right here don't use, and I kind of agree because what happens is this thing here is designed to basically pierce the top of a van or something like that. It's made to cut metal, and it actually makes your hole too big. So what they recommend is not to use this type that comes with it. This is more for metal attachments or if you have a big thick board but if you put it into plywood like i am i tried these at first and these weren't big enough but these are a number 14 by one inch and you don't want when you buy these i've got i've got i'll put the links on the actual page but you don't want to have this this weird fin the self tapping on the end you want you're okay with the pointed ones like that, but that's what you want. You don't want that hole to tear any bigger, and you want this to actually thread in. It has coarse threads, has your O-ring on there. So this is what I'm going to use to attach this. I'm going to take out, probably take out the ones I put in like this, and just redo them all with these. Uh, if you find a way to buy these better than I did, I had to buy 250 of them because they were like 30-something bucks on Amazon. But if you can find them in your local hardware store, cheaper by all means do that but i wanted to get it done so here they are and so i've got that those extensions put in those are three foot extensions but if you leave them cold like this i'm going to end up putting a little attach point here that's once this dries out right now it's wet and once it dries out i'm going to put a little attachment point on the zip tie that'll actually hold all this down so it won't be banging around up here but it's hooked up now so we're going to go downstairs we're getting sun it's somewhat of an angle and there's still a lot of water on this so we're going to see what we get now with our voltage so i'm going to go downstairs and see what the voltage is when i turn the breaker on so we'll go check that out all right i've got that solar panel turned on and like i say i don't have very good sun right now it's kind of a weird angle not direct sun above but i'm pretty impressive it looks like it's 85 watts is what's coming out of there right now and let's see what we got on our readings yeah 85 watts and wow, yeah, we've got 2.6 amps. That's most I've ever, I've never got more than 30 watts. Earlier on I did with the old panel, but this year 36 was as high as I could get even. Of course, we're not in the full sun yet. When we're getting full sun, it'll be hopefully over 100 watts. But 2.6 amps. And like I say, this, this particular solar panel is designed to be work in the shade. So it can actually have an overcast day and it still does pretty remarkable. So I'm pretty impressed with that. And like I say, before we get done with this test out, like I say, I got a few more things to hook up on the top as far as changing out those bolts. And then once I get that sealed up, then I'll come back in here and pull a good reading. And that'll be a little more toward noon. And we'll see what kind of reading we get then. But uh, pretty impressive. So I might have to do something different with this in the future. But what I'm going to use, I have these little tabs. They have 3M tape, which is actually waterproof tape. I'm going to attach those up in here and another one down here and use the zip ties to hold these away from so that won't chafe on that edge and then one down here to keep it from flopping around. I 
after adding those four bolts, two on each side to the middle here, went ahead and put my sealant on. Quite a bit of sealant on there. Hopefully that is going to work out okay. The only place I really didn't get was on the inside up in here. And I think because I put some on first, when I push the panel down, I shouldn't need to have any in there. So it's really hard to get it in there if I need to, but I think we're good to go. So we got this side done and we gotta go over here and get our other side. We'll get that from the ladder on the other side. Okay, I've got the all the sealant down. That's that die core stuff. And what'll happen with that is that will that will actually as the sun heats heats it a little bit it'll run and it could run down a little bit but not too bad this time of year I don't think we're gonna have to worry too much you want to make sure you get all your voids out of it I think we're gonna be pretty good with that and so last but not least took the old solar panel and we disabled it by cutting these leads off of here and we went ahead and sealed it up basically we just took some wire connectors we don't want those to cross into each other and we'll just keep it off the roof there so we'll hopefully that'll work out good with just cutting that off so last check out of this system as you can see the blue sky is moving in we're going to see where this changes it's already gone from 65 to almost 80 and it's just now coming to the surface and then we don't have direct sunlight we're right on the top of that so we're getting probably about a 38 degree angle on that so if the sun was straight up in the summertime we'd be doing even better but and there goes the wattage as it comes across there comes full sun right now there it's shooting up 104 watts we're actually got up to four amps there like in this panel and like i say it's designed for shade so i'm really impressed with it so far if you're going to buy one pay an extra 50 dollars and get the better one that's the way i look at it i thought i was going to save some by buying a cheaper one but this is the way to go there we go that's full sun that we have at an angle it's 165 watts and almost five amps there it goes five amps now so really happy with this setup so far i'll let you know how it holds up over time and over a couple camping trips and i'll give you a refresh in a few months of how well it worked once we go camping with it a lot but uh, that's about all i have for this video and uh if you have any questions on what I did and how I did it, leave it in the comments and uh, we'll see you on another one of these videos in the future, hopefully.